The main result of our paper is that we're reporting the creation, uh, to the best of our knowledge, the, for the first time, of a vortex, but not a trivial vortex in a loop, but tied into a knot. Knotted vortices and, and knotted configurations and flows have been conjectured for uh, almost a century. They are thought to occur in many different systems, starting from turbulent plasmas, like in the sun, turbulent flows in, in regular fluids. They've been conjectured to exist in the cores of neutron stars. We got the first glimpse into their evolution in a real system. So far, there have been uh, theories for how they should evolve, how long they should live, and what their dynamics should be and pretty much there were predictions for all ends of the spectrum on what they should do. Across different knot types and different link configurations, we've seen that they uh, evolve to self-interact and at some point apparently untie themselves. Although there's some subtleties in the way that they do that, that we think they're not untying themselves but just hiding the way they're knotted into finer details of their structure. The first thing we do is we take one of these hydrofoils and we attach it to the frame. And then what we do is we lower this thing into the water and then we coat the hydrofoil with bubbles. So there's just a little grid underneath on the bottom of the tank and basically you run current through this grid. And this makes micro bubbles of uh, hydrogen and oxygen. And these actually get caught on the hydrofoil itself. Basically what they get attracted to the closest vortex that, that is around. So this is what you're actually seeing, is the cores of these vortexes, basically low pressure centers due to the centripetal acceleration of the vortex itself. So this really lets you see where the center of, of the vortex is. The reason that we wanted to use water instead of using uh, air, for example, is that actually there is some sense in with it, which the viscosity of water is actually less than that of air. So if you just make a ring, say a normal uh, vortex ring in water, you actually expect it to last longer than the same vortex ring would last in air. The other reason that we really wanted to use water is that there's this beautiful technique for visualizing the vortices using bubbles. And if you have something that's lighter than the fluid in which it's embedded, it'll actually get attracted to the core of a vortex. And this becomes very important if you want to understand both the fine structure and uh, you want to be able to see more complicated shapes. So a hydrofoil is basically just a wing that's designed for use in water. And the reason that we use hydrofoils is because when you accelerate them, they produce a vortex ring the shape of which traces the trailing edge of the wing. And this lets us make vortices and vortice shapes that are very difficult to make uh, using conventional methods, say by just pushing some water out of like a hole, which is the way actually that you make a smoke ring with your mouth, for example. This lets us make topologies, if you like, of knotted shapes that are not possible to make with conventional methods. Now that we've sort of established the basics of what a knotted vortex does, we want to understand them in more detail. Uh, so there's a lot of open questions. For example, uh, after one of these things unties itself, it creates what's known as Kelvin waves on the resulting vortices. And we want to understand how these things evolve. Okay, so this is an open question which actually ties into a bunch of other fields. Since nobody had ever managed to create a, a vortex knot in the laboratory where you could study it, a lot of this theoretical work remained without its experimental twin. And so uh, being able to create it allows you to look uh, in experiment at what has been so far conjectured. One of the wonderful things about uh, working at the JFI is that we have a, a tremendously collaborative atmosphere. Without this sort of atmosphere and without using the, the printer, which was in fact in, in Heinrich Jäger's lab, we probably wouldn't have been able to, to do this research.